Time for a hands-on review of the long-awaited Canon 5D Mark IV. I finally got my hands on the long-awaited Canon 5D Mark IV. And, as I do with my other cameras, I'm going to provide a general overview. We're going to put this thing through the test, and I'm going to level set how this is going to work. So to begin with, I'm going to provide what I feel are a list of key features of this camera. And then, I'm going to put it to the test. We're going to go out and shoot a bunch of photos on this nice day back here in the woods, maybe get some action shots in. And I really want to get into some night photography with this camera, because I do want to test the low light capabilities and how this camera performs. And then when it's all said and done, I'm going to give you my list of pros and cons, and then I'm going to give you my general thoughts on this camera. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right in with what I feel are the important features. To begin with, this camera is a 30 megapixel sensor. Now this is a significant upgrade to the 5D Mark III, and hopefully that will yield some better results with the images. The other thing is the native ISO on this camera is ranging from 100 to 32,000 and it's expandable up to 102,000 and down to 50. It'll also shoot in continuous mode at 7 frames a second. It has 61 autofocus points, of which 21 are cross-type. The other thing Canon has touted about this camera is the dual pixel autofocus system, and we will be sure to put that to the test and see just how well that performs. It'll shoot 4K video at 30 frames a second, 1080p, at 60 frames a second and 720 at 120 frames a second. Comes with a built-in mic and headphone jack, which is to be expected. Also has built-in time-lapse features. It also has one compact slot here on the side and one SD slot. Has a very similar look and feel to the 5D Mark III, although it is 50 grams lighter. If you look at the top up in here, it's another thing they added to the uh, to the 5D Mark IV. Now this is not a built-in flash, these cameras typically don't have them, but what this is, uh, is GPS, Wi-Fi, and near-field communication. So that's the reason for the bump up here on the top. The other thing this camera has is dual pixel RAW feature and touchscreen here on the back. Now with all that said, let's go ahead and put this camera to the test and see just what it's made of.
really enjoying this camera. I've been shooting with it all day and it feels good, it's solid. The focus is locked on, no trouble there. It's very reminiscent of the 5D Mark III. Keeping in mind, I shoot with a lot of Nikon equipment. So for me, it's a pleasant surprise. I really enjoy this camera. After spending time with this camera, I'm going to move right into my list of pros, cons, and my overall thoughts. Now keep in mind, it's just my opinion, but hopefully it'll help you out. I'm going to jump right into my list of pros, so here we go. To begin with, I like the joystick feature here on the back. The thumb rests easily on it, and I found this to be beneficial to help me select my autofocus points. Next up, I like the programmatic button beneath the joystick here. Now you can't assign anything and everything to it, but for me, I assigned my ISO and I was able to put my thumb on it, use my index finger at the top, and quickly adjust my ISO. So for me, that was a nice little feature and benefit. The other thing I like about this camera is the dual pixel autofocus system. During my testing, I had no trouble in tracking subjects with this camera, and I attribute it to their autofocus system. So that's a nice job, and it's a nice benefit, and that's a big plus in my column. What else did I like? I like the built-in time-lapse feature. Now, I've tested this with other cameras, and I think it works well on this camera, and I like the programmatic features behind it. The camera itself can render that time lapse inside the body, or it can record the separate uh, images, and you can post-process them yourself. So I like that feature. Next up, color rendering. I think Canon does a great job at that. They've done it with all their cameras. The colors appear to be spot on, in my opinion, so they did a good job here. I also like the low light high ISO performance behind this camera. During my night photography, I thought the resulting images were great. I was able to run around at 1 60th of a second, run my ISO on all the way up to 12,000, I think, in that range, and the resulting images were great, in my opinion. The other thing I like is the touch screen here on the back. So, just like any other smartphone that's out there, if you're using an iPhone or an Android device, um, it's very natural and it can swipe, you can pinch to zoom, all that. It feels good, works well, and it was a nice job. Now, on to my list of cons. Here we go. This screen here on the back, I really wish it articulated. I don't think it's asking too much. I know a lot of uh, high-end professional cameras don't have articulating screens, but if you've used cameras with articulating screens, I'll tell you what, you get spoiled by it pretty quick. And if you're doing crowd shots, you're holding the camera up high, it's nice to have that screen tilt down at you, or if the camera's down low, you could tilt it up. It's just a nice feature. I wish they would have put, put it on here. They didn't, so in my, on my list, it's in my 
icon category. What else? The 4K video. Now, I'm not quite sure what Canon did here, but they're using an old antiquated codec that's using motion JPEGs. The resulting files are huge. Just seems a little impractical in my opinion. In addition, there's a crop factor, 1.64 when you shoot 4K. So, this is a full sensor camera. I wish they would have taken more advantage of it, but it is what it is. Now, most people will say this is a professional still camera, and I get that. But in this day and age, if you plan to leverage this for 4K video, you may want to think again. What else? Well, for me, if you take a look at this right here, it's the card slots here on the side. Now, they do have dual card slots, and I appreciate that. One's compact, one's SD. I wish they would have had dual high-speed SD slots in here. Just me, though, and again, it's just my list, so it's in my con category. The other thing is, they talk about the dual pixel RAW feature. Now, it's something that Canon touts quite a bit, and it records the A and B channels, doubles up the, uh, the size, and it's supposed to give you um, additional benefits when you go to post-process. Now, my testing, I really didn't notice that. Um, I noticed a very slight modification in the bokeh and the focal point, but in my opinion, it's not worth the effort. So for me, it's in my con category. Again, you can, you can kind of take that for what it's worth. One last notable here is this. Now, I shoot in RAW, but I did test this camera with the JPEGs coming right out. And for me, I thought they were a little bit soft, and I attribute that to the aliasing filter. Now, some of the competition cameras like the Nikon D5, D500, and I believe the D5500, they removed the aliasing filter. What's nice about that is it makes for sharper images, in my opinion. I believe that's what's causing these images to be just a little bit soft. I wish they would remove the aliasing filter in this camera. Again, it's just my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. Now, on to my general thoughts and summary of this camera. I hope my list of cons didn't outweigh the list of pros because this is a solid camera. It's a great general purpose professional camera, in my opinion. It feels meaty. It feels like it's got a lot of quality to it. Um, I think that Canon did a great job in improving the uh, overall dynamic range, the image quality, and the low light performance. Now, I think there are a lot of people that were hoping Canon would do a little more. I mean, this is the long awaited successor to the D3 and, or the D, D5 Mark III, and I think that they were hoping for a little more, but keep in mind this is still, in my opinion, a vast improvement over the Mark III. Now, who's this camera for? If you already have invested in the Canon quality lenses or you have previous bodies, you could take those previous bodies if you want, take your 5D Mark III, Mark II, sell the body, and you want to upgrade, I think it's a great upgrade. Now, if you're new to the world of professional photography and you're looking for your first body and you're not invested with the Canon lenses, you may want to look at the competition. I might suggest the Nikon D810 or the D750. Why? Because they're a fraction of the cost here and I think they compete on every level with this camera. So, with that said, I hope this video has helped you out and maybe it's helped point you in the right direction. I don't know, but hopefully it did. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, post them below. I'm pretty quick about responding to the host. So if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel as well. It's called The Real World. You never know what you might get. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but I also post them about homeownership and automobile maintenance. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.